What's going on guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be doing the exhaust on the Dodge Stealth RT. In the last video, we put a cold air intake on the car, so if you didn't check that out, make sure to go watch it. it came out really good. In today's video, though, we are going to be putting on this exhaust here. Uh, it's the one we picked up and decided to use. Uh, this is a the 3SX downpipe. Um, now there is a what's called a Fed spec and a California spec for this downpipe. Uh, on the website, it tells you how to check which one your car is, uh, so that way you make sure you pick up the right exhaust. Um, and we went ahead and got the High Flow Cat. Uh, you can get a test pipe, but those tend to sound more raspy, and so the high flow cat gives it more back pressure, so it has a better sound for what we wanted for the car. The high flow cat also allows more flow than the stock cat does, uh, so we went ahead and picked that up, so it should be a good mix between flow and back pressure. Um, and we also got the maximal performance uh, single shot cat back exhaust, uh, it should give it a deep deeper sound than the stock exhaust offers. Now before we do this, we are going to take the stealth out and show you the before, how the exhaust sounds now. And another reason we're doing this is because a trick to getting the bolts off of the car, um, being as they are old bolts and they are slightly rusted, involves letting the exhaust and the bolts heat up. So we are going to allow the exhaust to heat up um, and we'll show you what the trick is when we get back. Now, as you can hear, the exhaust is fairly quiet now. It's not super loud, um, but we're gonna take it on the test drive, let you hear it while we're moving, uh, so you can get a better idea of how it sounds while driving. And when we get back, we'll put the new exhaust on. pretty good so we got it home we're gonna get it in the garage get up on the ramps and uh, start taking the exhaust off all right so now the car is jacked up it's up in the air um, you can lift your car any way you want being as we do not have a lift here at the house uh, we went with the an old school method we put lifts on the, uh, the ground, we got the car up on the lifts and we jacked it up using this point right here. From there, we got jack stands put on and we got the car just kind of sitting up here. And the trick 
that we talked about earlier is you get the car nice and hot, you drive it around, let the bolts warm up, let the exhaust warm up, and then you're gonna take some cold water in a spray bottle, um, and you're gonna spray all the bolts, and what that does is it causes the bolts to rapidly shrink, um, allowing it to break free of the rust, making sure you do less work without having to sit there and just grind away. Break bolts, strip them. Yeah, and you don't have to worry about stripping your bolts, or breaking them, it, it, it's a nice, easy solution to help. Another thing you can do is a few days before, maybe once a day, you take some PB blaster and you go through and you spray all the bolts to help loosen them up a bit and break down the rust some more. So, so like I said, we're gonna spray these bolts with cold water uh, to get them to shrink rapidly. And what it does is it causes the bolts to shrink um, and cool down so that way they can break free from the rust and they're easier to get off the car. And we went ahead and set up some fans uh, to help blow the hot air out from under the car and allow it to be touchable again. Uh, you're going to want to cool your exhaust down before you go touching it um, because obviously you don't want to burn yourself. Uh, so when this cools down and we're able to touch the exhaust again, we're going to start breaking the bolts loose. So another thing we went ahead and did is we got a brand new O2 sensor. Um, if you're replacing your exhaust, you might want to go ahead and do it. Uh, this exhaust only needs one O2 sensor, uh, depending on your type of car and the type of exhaust you're putting in, you might need more. Um, it's always a good idea when you're replacing your exhaust to do a new O2 sensor, just because if you didn't personally do it yourself, you don't know when the last time it's been replaced is, if you need a new one or not. So it's just a good idea to go ahead and get a new one. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is take the O2 sensor off. To do that, you just take this little grommet off and then you, you pull the wire lightly um, and the O2 sensor comes out. Uh, I'm gonna unplug that now. Just like that. And the next thing we're gonna go ahead and do is take this bracket off. To do that, it's just a couple bolts and it's connected by this little strap and we're just going to undo that bolt because we don't know if we're going to need it for right now um and we're going to take off the hangers and lower the exhaust well, you got to crack through the bolts loose too but well yeah but yeah we'll take this bracket off the hangers will still be holding the exhaust and then we'll pop the bolts loose that hold it to the manifolds and then we should be able to just slide out of the hangers and drop it right down yep all right, so as you can see, we got the exhaust out. Uh, it took us a few days um, to get it out, but I'll let my dad explain how we got it. So after three days of messing with this thing, come over here. We tried an entire can of PB blaster, didn't work. An impact gun that we went and got just for this job, didn't work. And finally, a torch. You're gonna need one of these torches. This thing is a lifesaver. Basically what we did, is we put the torch on the nut, got it red hot for about two, three minutes, and then took a long breaker bar with a half inch drive and just wrenched on that thing and finally got it to break loose. Took three days to do this. Basically a lot of PB blaster, a lot of waiting, and then a lot of heat on the nut. As you can see, it also pulled the studs out of the back flange. No big deal. We put the studs right back up in there with a little bit of anti-seize this time. But you're definitely gonna want some heat to heat up them nuts. It really helps a lot. And then a lot of PV blaster. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So now that everything's off, what we're gonna do is work on getting the downpipe up there. We're gonna dry fit it first. We got the brand new gaskets and then we're gonna put a thin layer of ultra copper RTV on each side, just to ensure that there's no leaks. Just a real thin layer on each side. And then we'll just kind of finger tight let it dry for an hour and then torque it down and then we'll go from there all right so we got the downpipe put on nice it's nice and tight um let the rtv that we put on dry for an hour essentially all you want to do is finger tight tighten it till it starts to push the rtv and let it dry for an hour and come back in and torque it down uh make sure it stays solid and we went ahead and put on everything from the cap back uh, everything's through the hangers, um, exhaust is where it needs to be. Um, now, before we put the cat itself on, 
is kind of a requirement when you put on an exhaust, you have to run it open headers. So we're gonna go ahead and start it up and run it for a little bit. Ready to see what she sounds like open headers? Let's do it. Battery's dead. <laughs> <laughs> now that we've got a new battery, take two. Let's see how this sounds with open headers, pretty much. Just the down pipe. So now that we acted like a child for a little bit, we're gonna go ahead and put on the high flow cat. Uh, it's the same process as the downpipe. We're just gonna put a thin layer of copper RTV in between the gaskets um, and it should bolt right up in. All right, so as you can see, we got the exhaust all bolted in. Um, when you get your exhaust bolted in, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is take some soapy water, just water with some dish soap in it. Uh, and you're gonna wanna spray down all of your connections. Um, and if, you have an exhaust leak, it's going to cause the water to bubble up because of the air shooting out. Uh, we went ahead and did that. We couldn't find any bubbles, uh, couldn't find any exhaust leaks or anything. Uh, so we went ahead and drive it around, see if any there's any carbon or any soot uh, on any of these connections. So like I said, we checked, there's no exhaust leaks of any kind. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a startup for you guys. Uh, right now we have the silencer in. Uh, so we're gonna run it a little bit, show you what it sounds like, and we're gonna take the silencer out and see what it sounds like then. Ready? Yup. All right, so we got the silencer out. Um, essentially all it is is this little tube uh, that restricts the amount of air that can come out, make it a little quieter. So we took that out. Now, as you can see, it's a lot more open. There's no restrictions right here. So it's just sound much better. So we're gonna go ahead and rev it, let you hear it and then take it for the test drive.
sounds super good. A lot better than it did before. It's got a more aggressive tone to it. Dude. It's like a deep tone. It's not like ricey. Yeah. It sounds a lot better after taking the silencer out too. Oh, much better. I don't know why anyone would get exhausted and have the silencer out. Thanks so much for watching the video. A special thanks to my dad for helping me with it. I'll leave his 
uh, his YouTube in the description below. Let me know in the comments what you think. Make sure to like and subscribe. And definitely go check out the intake video. We'll leave that in the description below. Have a good day.